So you guys clicked on this video because you guys already know that Boost is life. So you know that there's not models out there that people hate, right? Unfortunately, that's not the case. There's definitely some models of Adidas Boost that people don't like and I thought I'd discuss it in this video. Welcome to the channel. I am Hess from CollectiveKicks.com and I wanted to bring you guys a video today talking about the top five pairs of Adidas Boost sneakers that people hate. So this is more from a general opinion, not necessarily mine. There's definitely some in this countdown that I absolutely love, but this is just in general what people think of the Adidas Boost line and some of the ones that they just don't like. But if you guys have a difference in opinion, please leave a comment and let others know what is the worst pair of Adidas Boost sneakers on the market right now. And this is just for a fun conversation. As you guys already know, and I've said it in the past, Boost is like pizza and all pizza is good, all Boost is good. Some models just definitely are more favorited than others. So let's jump right into the top five. The number five spot goes to the Pure Boost from Adidas and this is a revamped 2017 version of the Pure Boost. I put a little swag on mine and added the zip, which I really like. And I, I like this shoe a lot. This is definitely one of those great shoes that I think people are just sleeping on. I say that people hate them because there's just no hype on the shoe. There's no resale market, except for maybe the Silver Boost pair, but you could still actually buy those at retail right now. So it's just not a, a pair of sneakers that people really like. And I don't know necessarily why. It's a really comfortable shoe and it doesn't have prime knit on the upper. It just has the like the circular knit instead. That might be a deterrent. Also, the aesthetics of the burrito tongue might throw people off because this tongue is kind of, it reminds me of that Jurassic Park Raptor thing with the tongue. So maybe that throws people off also, but all in all, these things are sweet and the comfort of these are amazing. I would probably rock these over an Ultra Boost probably three out of five days just because I really like these. So next up we have the 9370, I'm just kidding. I'm totally joking. 9317 is amazing. Number four spot does go to these two shoes here. We have both Ultra Boost and this is the uncaged and this is the ST version that I removed the cage on. But both of these are kind of sleepers. People just not really feeling either one of these models. But when these ones released, it was actually the biggest release day on adidas.com for the most sales at least from this shoe. And it really sold out quickly, but the resale on the market is just really dead. Anytime that there's new colorways coming out, they're, they pretty much sit unless it's like a collaboration or something really limited. This one, this one is pretty much never sold out, the Ultra Boost ST, which I've gone on record and saying this is the most comfortable Adidas Boost that I have in my collection. It's just such an amazingly comfortable shoe. Just so you can see, I've worn this pair quite a bit as you can see from the traction. And this is just a really, really comfortable shoe. Just aesthetically though, it's just not very pleasing to most people. I like it without the cage and I think it's a great shoe, but definitely one of the ones that people hate along with the uncaged. Moving on to the number three spot, we have the Adidas NMD and this is the XR1. And I don't know why the XR1s are so hated. Why are these ones always, why are these so hated? This colorway used to be pretty hot. It was reselling for I think 280 or so. Try to find them now and the price points are like super, super low. It's almost pretty much retail on the pair of the NMD glitch. Granted they restocked many times, Part of the reason why it killed the resale but it's a sick colorway but regardless of that the entire model is just one that people just hate i don't know what it is about the xr1 they just don't pick it up it's it's more of a mid-top version and it has the cages on it i really like the overall aesthetics of the shoe too i think it looks great but it's funny that this one just doesn't get the love that a lot of the other nmd models get and maybe it just takes the right collaboration and everybody jumps on board with this model if i was adidas that's what i would do because Every time that these drop, they're sitting in stores all over the place. In, in stores and online, I'll link them to Adidas as well as like End and some other stores. You can get a variety of different colorways of these and the camel ones are always out there. Just shocking to see because I just thought these ones would be a hit and it's surprising that they're not. The NMD Bape camos are reselling for hundreds of dollars, but the camel pack for the, the XR1s are sitting in stores everywhere. I just don't, I don't know. It's just hype. It looks like the same pattern pretty much. People definitely not feeling the XR1. I like them. Moving on to the next. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's a leaf blower outside. Ugh, so annoying. It's so hard to do videos nowadays. Moving on to the number two spot, we have this shoe right here. And I know you guys are going, but wait, it's just an Adidas Superstar. It's a shell toe, those things are great. But no, it's it's not. It has the hidden boost on the side. The, the muffin top boost sticking out the side of the Superstar. And I think that th this one was the big miss from Adidas. Price point's a little bit high. Decent quality shoe. It runs a little bit small, it's a little bit narrow. You'd think that these would be comfortable because they added boost into the classic shell toe superstars, but it just didn't work for it. They're just not comfortable. You can't feel the boost. 
at least in my opinion. And somebody left a comment on my review video said, after you break these in a lot more, you can feel a little bit better. Maybe I believe that, but at the end of the day, Boost is like one of those types of technologies that you put the shoes on your feet and they're comfortable. You don't break in Boost, like for the most part. So if you have to break them in, they're doing it wrong in my opinion. I'm pretty sure that the consumers just really didn't like the muffin top effect on this shoe and it just wasn't attractive. So this is the one where they're like, nope, I'm not even gonna try this one. I think like I mentioned in the review video though, if you're a huge fan of the Superstar, this is might be a great alternative. It's just not as comfortable as they should have made it, in my opinion. Moving to the number one spot, I don't even have the model here because I've never even bought one, and that is the Trail Boost. I think people definitely hate the Trail because it is just not the business. Maybe there's just not enough people that actually go on trail hikes, and if you do go on trail hikes, you're probably not gonna wear a Boost. I don't, I don't really know. Maybe it's just not the right match for a sneaker and the technology, but at the end of the day, it's just a shoe that I think most of us look at and we literally look at it and move to the next. Like our eye scans right past that trail boost. Even online, you scan down the items online, you see the trail boost and you just keep going right past it. It's just not an attractive shoe. It's not one that attracts any attention. It might be a great shoe and somebody please correct me in the comments and say, dude, I have the trail boosts, they're awesome. The positive side to that is if you actually want a pair, you can get them for pretty decent prices. There's no resale market on them. They're always available. That is one that I've never tried. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a pair that I will get eventually and I'll be like, these are amazing. I go on trail hikes all the time with these because I'm in Oregon and we have trails everywhere. But it's definitely one that I just haven't tried yet. So that is why it is on the number one spot on my countdown. Didn't want to leave you without any runner-ups and there's a whole bunch that you guys suggested. Shout out to those people that reached out and left a comment back to me on Twitter because a lot of these suggestions were really great that you guys had. Some of these definitely made that runner-up spot. The first runner-up is a, a Nikki Boost. I don't even know how to say the freaking name, but it's definitely one where people just are not feeling the look of the shoe. I definitely am waiting for more colorways and I definitely want to try them because it looks like a really comfortable model. But the fusion of like old school Cortez sort of look and um, and then the new technology, I'm not sure if people are really liking the overall look of the shoe. Regardless of the initial hype of those shoes, I feel like the hype has definitely gone down quite a bit. The Crazy Explosive Highs was definitely one where people thought they were the most ugly pair of shoes on the market, and they ended up being the, the most comfortable and the best ones to play basketball in, if you ask me, which are the ones that I would ball in. At New York Sneaker Con, I balled in the Crazy Explosive Highs and they were amazing. It's just a great shoe. It's just aesthetics, just not very good looking. The Crazy Explosive Lows though, A1, Really, really dope, especially with the Prime Knit. The last runner-up is a CS1 or 2. People just don't seem to really like that overall look to the NMD. Uh, I personally really like it. It's actually one of my favorites because it's just super comfortable. Both models are really comfortable, and I like the fact that it doesn't have any of those laces on there. But those are my runner-ups. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree with this list? Are there some that you think I'm completely out left field and um, if you think that's the case, leave some comments and let others know why. Or leave some comments and let me know, yeah, I agree with you because whatever it is on the countdown. That is all we have for this video. If you guys like the content, hit the subscribe button and it will notify you when I post more videos. If you guys are interested in seeing any more of my top five videos, go ahead and click right here and it will take you to the playlist. Or you can click right here and see some other videos on my channel. Or click like over there and subscribe to my channel. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you guys for some more videos soon. Peace.